Guys, welcome to Dude I Love or Hate, my new ride. This original TFL video series is aimed at helping you find and buy your new car. We're going to be speaking with new car owners. We're going to discuss the new car buying process, and we're going to find out if they love or hate their new car. So let's get started with one of our favorite cars, the brand new Jeep Wrangler JL. Hey guys, welcome to our new show, Dude, I Love My New Car. And this show is all about you and all about you because it's about the buying experience. We're going to find out, first of all, why you bought this new car. And then we're going to talk about the process. And then at the end of this video, we're going to do a little walk around so you can show us your new vehicle. And this is Brian. And Brian, obviously, we're sitting on your brand new Wrangler JL. Uh, so the first question is, why'd you buy a Jeep Wrangler JL? I looked all around Colorado, east, west, south, north, uh, from Boulder down to Colorado Springs, and I just couldn't find, you know, a real good deal on a new JL. Yep. Uh, because, you know, here in Colorado, Wranglers were like selling ice in the desert. I, we ended up uh, going with a dealership and special ordering this out of Nampa, Idaho. Okay. And we saved a ton of money. Uh, you know, the list price. Yeah, I've yeah, we got your sticker that. right here, $49,000 and 410 So uh, how much did you end up paying for it? A uh, little over $41,000. So you saved uh, on a brand new JL $8,000. That's right. Wow. Yeah. In so, Idaho. In Idaho. And you, you special ordered this, right? Because yes. you wanted something that's very rare, and that is you wanted a two-door mm -hmm. a manual mm -hmm. uh, with an unpainted... Um, roof. Roof. And here's the hard part, cloth seats, right? Because when right. you get up to $49,000, you're going to get leather. That's right. So if you want cloth, and I suspect you want a cloth because you're wheeling it, right? And you don't want the leather? Or is there another reason? Well, the when you have the top off, yeah. leather burns your yeah, but, backside. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just does. It and it's not comfortable uh, when it's super cold. Yep. It takes a long time to warm up, even though the seat heaters in this thing is awesome. Um, but with a manual, you can't get the remote start. So, you know, you're going to get in, it's cold yeah. every time. So we kind of went that route. So did you think about purchasing something else or were you set on a Wrangler? You knew you wanted a Wrangler? No, we knew we wanted okay. a Wrangler. Right. There's no, no question. Because, you know, we, we were talking about the cars that I had a little earlier. Yeah. So it's like I, I've, I've, we've got all the different cars, but this one is for a purpose. And it's not, you know, a mall crawler per se. It's actually to do the trails here in Colorado because when we live in California, you know, Rubicon, Ocotillo Wells, you know, right. we all up and down the state, you know, we took our car, we actually used it, or our, our rig, or, you know, I don't want to offend any Jeep people, but uh, we took our Jeep and we used it. So the plan here was to take this and use it. And you and Tommy actually was uh, pushing us to do this because every weekend, <laughs> see where you guys were going, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was like, I want to do that. And my wife can attest. It's just like, quit obsessing. And it's like, no, we, we have to do this. You know, Imogene and Black Bear Pass and, you know, all of the non-Rubicon. So I, I had these series of 10 questions, and you pretty much answered all of them. Uh, some of them don't apply. For instance, how was your test drive? You just yeah, wanted we, it. Yeah. Yeah, our, wanted our test drive was coming through Yellowstone. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, and the Grand yeah, yeah. Tetons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that was yeah, our test drive. Yeah. So uh, the other part about this is we want to talk about kind of the options you bought and the experience you've had with it. So how long have you had it now? We, we picked it up on October 29th. Okay, so you've had it about three months? Yeah. Yeah, okay, how many yeah. miles have you put on it? Uh, there's probably about 4,500. All right, any problems? Um, nothing that the dealership has anything to do with, but there, there are common problems. Okay. You know, number one is the windshield. Yeah, it's cracked. I know it's this. cracked. Let's, let's walk around and show them. We interrupt this video from a word from our sponsors, TFL. Have you guys bought a new car in the last several months? If so, we want to hear from you. We're doing a new show called Dude, I Love My New Ride, where we're featuring new car ownership, the experience, what's it like to buy it, how much did you pay? We'd love to feature you on this channel. So if you do, send an email to info at TFL car. Describe the car that you've bought. Maybe send us a picture and you too could be featured on our channel. So there's a bit of a crack right here, and that happens here a lot in Colorado. It does. But you, you think it's because of the type of glass the Jeep's using? Yeah, the, uh, you know, going from the forum perspective, they say that it's um, acoustic glass. Yeah. Whatever the heck that means. Bottom line is, is you know, um, we have a Grand Cherokee, and it looks like rifle shots have hit it, mm. and they bounce off, okay, yeah. for whatever reason. But well, even much more upright windshield, though. True, too. but, you know, on our... You know, JK yeah. and on our TJ, 
they seem to last a little longer. Okay. I mean, this is only three months old, right? So, so windshield, what else happened? Um, really nothing. That's it. Do you, how about the death wobble? Any issues with that? No. no, you said you had some experience with that, though. You said that it has to do with a front end alignment. So some people have this issue where the steering does not right. feel right. Well, there's, there's two issues. There's yeah. two things that have come up. Um, some people will throw a lift on it, and they'll use a shop that doesn't have an alignment rack. Yep. Well, one thing, if your steering wheel isn't straight on, yep. a, on a JK or a JL, it's going to feel like death wobble, okay, because yep. the thing's going to buck and bounce all over the place. It's because the computer in it is kicking in the ABS, and um, you're going to have a problem, mm -hmm. and you need to get it aligned right away. And it may be one of these where they kind of aligned it, but if the uh, steering wheel is off by a certain degree, the thing's going to buck like a Bronco. But you've had no issues? No, no issues. All right. So let's talk about um, the upgrades you've done. Right? I, sure. I think the Wrangler is probably the most customizable, upgradable, whatever well, you want to say. Well, let's start at the most important one. The winch? No. OK, what's that? The most important right. one. And this is a G-Pack. Uh, you can do this uh, on Amazon right. okay, for less than 8 bucks. Yeah. You can buy this rubber piping, okay? Yeah. And uh, I have to make a call out to Way of Life, yeah. uh, Eddie and Cindy, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. Eddie, Eddie's the one that yeah. turned me on to this. So, you know, Eddie, this is for you. But um, for about eight bucks, you can buy this rubber piping yeah. and put it between your fenders. And why is that important? Why well, is that important? When you're wheeling, Okay, or if you're like here in Colorado where they use uh, sand on the highway, you'll get rocks that come down into here. Mm. Okay, yeah. and with painted fenders or non painted fender and paint, you're going to scratch the heck out of it. Okay, so G Pack, awesome. Easy to do? Totally. Where do you get it? Uh, Amazon. Amazon, okay, how much is it? Uh, eight bucks. Eight bucks, there you go. Eight easy bucks. peasy, love it. It's all four. Uh, now, I know this Warren Winch wasn't eight bucks. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that was a little more expensive. <laughs> well, well, okay, so there's a story behind this, too. Okay. On the previous TJ, um, I went back and forth, put a really good winch on it or put a Badlands winch on it, right? Yeah. So this time around, I went with the Warren VR series, which technically isn't a real Warren because it's, you know, Chinese manufactured to Warren specs, you know. Yeah. But I went with the VR series um, on this because on that TJ that we had, um, when it got totaled out, I didn't get my winch back. And I wasn't going to do that again. So you weren't going to, yeah. And, yeah. and let's face it, you don't use these a lot. No, it's these insurance. Are, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. If, if, if you're out wheeling, okay, and my wife and I, we've done this, you, you get into certain areas that you didn't plan on, okay? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how good four-wheel drive, how great your tires are or whatever, you'll end up, especially here in Colorado, where it's icy. And you just need something to get you yeah. back on the road. I think you said it right. It's yeah. insurance. How yeah. hard is it to put in? I know these Rubicon bumpers are winch ready, so <laughs> um, Jeep says. But I've heard people tell me that it's hard to get these winch in, winches in there, that, the, that it's a tricky thing. You have to have, like, monkey hands. If they buy too big of a winch, yeah. you know, it's a two-door, so you don't need, you, you only need an 8,000-pound winch for these. Especially a two-door, yeah. 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 I put a 10,000 on it. Usually the rule is you want, whatever the vehicle weighs, you want 2x that for Correct. the winch, right? Yeah. yeah. And some people go and they get that, you know, $2,000 winch, and guess what? It doesn't fit. The winch motor right here doesn't really fit well, mm -hmm. okay? And you have to do some trimming. So that could add some problems. This is a VR10S uh, synthetic rope winch that's underneath here. Um, How long did it take you? It, it took about two hours. It's not bad. And, and, the, and by myself, too. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't have anybody helping me and out. And YouTube? And YouTube. <laughs> it, no, totally. I, I mean, I, I forget. That's who, all you do. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I forget who um, was teaching me how to do this, but they were spot on. And, you know, I, I forget the name of the, uh, this isn't the worn winch plate. It was a different winch plate. It's a different winch plate. Yeah. And it was actually the different winch plate, um, their video that walked you through it. And you just put everything in there loose to, you know, until you get it set up the way you want. You crank everything down and you throw the bumper on. And it's not that hard. Good. Good. You do have to be mechanically inclined, but it's not that hard. Actually, the, the hardest part was um, because of the winch plate and the fair lead plate, the 
worn bolts weren't long enough, so I had to get a Home you know, Depot. And get longer bolts, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get longer bolts. Yeah, that would be like 15 trips for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about, sure. you did the antenna? That's, that's yeah, a common. Yeah, I literally did that this weekend. Yeah, I like that. I mean, obviously you get this little metal antenna that kind of white yeah. vibrates, and so it's nice to have these little stubby antennas, but this yeah. is interesting. You've yeah. got a Sunrider by, right. by Best Top, right? So why don't we show them what that is? Normally sure. this comes with a set of Freedom Tops, which are these fiberglass panels. There's two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they fit into the front part, and the idea is uh, you can move them and you can get sun into the cabin of the Jeep. Unfortunately, they're big, they're heavy, and then if you're wheeling, you put them in the back and they're bouncing they're around. They're bouncing around, totally. Yeah, and they get, you know, mm -hmm. cracked up. Or So let's, let's, show, them, let's, let's sure. show, show them how these, this works. Ian, I'll let you decide. So this is uh, basically a pretty easy replacement for those Freedom Tops. So it's really tough. Yeah. I mean, it's so hard. One, two, and then it just accordions up. Look at that. And there's your uh, Sunrider open top. And does it make noise when you're on the highway? Sometimes, you know, soft tops can make noise. Does it say pretty no. taunt? It, it, some people will complain, yeah. but it, they haven't driven with their freedom panels on the highway. And, and I'll tell you, here's, here's one thing. For whatever reason, for the JL, yep. there's a lot of noise, wind noise right here. Okay. Okay. A pillar. So, and, and it's, it seems to be more pronounced on this side, and it's maybe because the steering wheel is in front of you over here. But with the uh, Sunrider, it's not any more louder than with the Freedom Tops, in my opinion. And we have the headliner, factory headliner on the Freedom Top. So, I don't notice it being louder. Some people have complained, I know there's a couple of YouTube videos where people complain that it's really loud, but it's not any louder than with the hardtops. Okay. And I think it's just because you've got a channel right here that for whatever reason- Creates wind noise. Creates wind noise. All right, let's talk about the lift or the lack thereof. You yeah. said you lifted the TJ, you haven't lifted this one. No. Are you gonna lift it? And no. you said you, you thought about it at the dealership, right? You, you yeah. thought about buying the Mopar two inch lift, but what happened? Well, we, we, at the dealership, you know, you're excited, you're getting yeah. a great discount. Yeah. The, the parts guy comes in and says, I'll sell it to you at cost. So they loaded up the uh, four-door lift into the back of this, and we were just going to have it installed at a dealership. Because one of the things that's nice about the Mopar lift, if you buy it and have a dealership it's install warranty. it, it's warranty. Yeah. And, and that gets lost on some people, because some dealerships will say, Oh, it's because you've modified this, we're not gonna cover that, okay? With the Mopar lift, guess what? They cover everything, especially with a, a Chrysler dealership installing it. So we're all excited, great, put a, the two inch lift in it. The um, parts manager comes back and says, hey, I can't sell you the lift because it's not for two door, it's for four door. So, you know, uh, again, not to get into an argument with anybody on YouTube, but Oh, the, that'll happen no matter what. No matter we, what. Yeah, we, we're already way into many arguments, so don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. But the, the Mopar 2-inch lift uh, is for a 4-door. It is not for a 2-door. And let's face it, you know, you said you used to live by Lake Tahoe, mm -hmm. uh, so you've done the parts of the Rubicon mm -hmm. Trail. Uh, we've done the Rubicon Trail in this Jeep. You really don't need that much of a lift. I mean, this yeah. thing is so capable of the shelf mm -hmm. that add, adding a lift makes it actually much worse for the time that you use it the most, which is on the road. Correct. Right? Yeah. It gets, it gets, well, it gets kind of wandery and, yeah. and, and it slows down because you put bigger wheels, usually bigger tires mm -hmm. on it. And you can put bigger tires on this. I mean, you can go 35s. Right. You, with, without a lift, you can yeah. put 35s on this. And that was another selling feature because we had a 2013 JKUR. Yeah. And we did it all. We put the lift on it and everything in it. The whole deal. It wasn't fun to drive anymore. It was great off road that 1% of the time you're, you know, really using it. But for 99% of the time, it was tough. I have to tell you, I love the color. Good. The beautiful color. Did, did you, you special order this? Uh, my uh, wife your did. Your wife, okay. Yeah, it, it, I, I, I was gonna go toward hella yellow yeah. or mojito, yeah. just, you know, as the big middle finger. Right. Um, but she stepped in and it's she elegant, got the It's sporty. Yes. Your wife has and, good taste. She does, and, and I don't know why she's with me, but, <laughs> but the, the fact Same is. Same my wife. <laughs> Mystery. Funny? Yeah. Yeah. Married up. Yeah. But uh, the, the funny thing is, is I've never been complimented on a color as much as What's the name this of this? Ocean Blue. Ocean Blue, okay. I mean, it, it, we literally on our way over here, we, we got it washed, 
and the gal who was vacuuming it mentioned it, yeah. and the guy who was finishing it off mentioned it, and uh, it happens everywhere we go. And so let's talk numbers. What kind of MPG are you getting? Uh, let me see what let me see what Jeep sure. says. Yeah, let me get the Monroni here. So Jeep says that you should be getting uh, 20 combined, 17 in the city, 25 on the highway. Are you getting that? No. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. No. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, is when we, we, we flew to Napa, Idaho to yeah. pick it up, yeah. uh, driving it back, we got 14.1. Okay, that's, that's a far cry from... From yeah, 25, five, right? Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, it's like... Is that coming, what the Jeep said? Did it say 14? Yeah, yeah okay. and we, I also did that okay. yeah, calculation as well. So 14.1. And I'm thinking, oh, that's a mile better than my JKUR used to get. Yeah. <laughs> so now with about 4,500 miles on it, I'm averaging 18 and a half, 19 miles to the gallon. And that's city and freeway. And, of course, we've got the Pentastar underneath. Yes. And you do have the manual. Yes. Yes. And yeah. uh, it's you, a true unicorn. Yeah, it is because it's short wheelbase, yep. right? Two door, uh, manual, mm -hmm. um, Pentastar. Mm -hmm. um, ocean blue. Ocean blue. Which isn't the you know, firecracker red's like the most uh, purchased color right now. Would you buy it again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't even hesitate. And, uh, let me ask you my softball question. What's your favorite part of the Jeep? Okay, we took it to Moab. Yep. Uh, low, first gear, no lockers. We never even needed to go there near, not, near the lockers. What once. were you running? Uh, fins and things yeah. we started out yeah. on. Hell's Revenge we finished up on. It's and we, we did all of Hell's Revenge okay. all the way out to the top of the world. Yep. And uh, coming back on Hell's Revenge, coming out, um, we were following ATVs, quads. Yeah. Yeah. And um, a couple of the quads in front of us stopped. They, they didn't want to go up this one uh, it's the only way out. There's yeah, no way around so it. So they had to go. <laughs> they had to go. <laughs> but so one guy gets out of it, yeah. and he's like, hey, to his buddy, you need to drive it over this thing. Meanwhile, my wife and I, just in first gear, again, no lockers, powered right on through it, and probably made him feel a little bad um, going over it. And we, 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 should, we should get your wife over here. Come on over here. She has, you do social media, right? Yes. Sonny, so what's your social media? Why don't you give it a plug so people know? You know. uh, Sunny Sorby is my Facebook, and we have a YouTube channel called Suns, Guns, and Buns. We set it up really on the um, YouTube channel for the JKUR. Okay. And we've got a Hellcat like yours. Yep. And um, she also does uh, gun videos for girls with guns type okay. of thing. And we kind of set it up for all of that, but then right as we started rolling with it, you know, YouTube kind of came down. You know, on anything that's not politically correct, from you know, signing. So is, is it still there? Is it still there? It's still there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We right. just haven't paid any attention. All right. All right. So yeah. check it out, guys. Sons, guns, and buns. Yes. Uh, and I want to thank you very much for taking the time and driving no up here and sharing your uh, brand new uh, Jeep Wrangler. Thank you very much thank for very much. Uh, letting uh, us uh, and you guys. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and then I'm sure you guys will be there answering them as well. And Absolutely. we'll we'll do the best that we can. And if you have any questions and and for me, you know, this is a new series we're trying to do. We're trying to help you guys buy your dream vehicle. And so we're profiling owners who have gone through the process. And we'd love to get your comments as to whether this was helpful, whether you felt like you got the information that you needed, and whether there should be some other questions that I should be asking outside of these 10 that I have written down. So as always, this is Roman, my new friend Brian. Thank you. Saying thanks for watching. Remember, check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, dude, I love my new ride reviews. Love my new ride. See you guys next time. Ciao.